song comes from Wales. from this afternoon's run, sir. Oh, good. Got the results and let me have the graph. Yes, sir. When I've done that, would you mind if I left a little bit early, Dr. MacDonald? My aunt is on her own. Oh, what about the military? Isn't Coit Sison full of army personnel? It is. Only they go on duty the moment the air raid sirens sound. Ah. And my cousin Owen is a fireman. Yes, all right, Hugh. We'll be shutting the lab down in a little while anyway. Thank you, Dr. MacDonald. Good night, sir. I'll see you in the morning. We hope. Collator's office, Robert Klein. Yesterday? Well, then I imagine it's on Sivian's desk this morning. Good. Now, Field, I hope you've got that we could send down to Swansea right away. A missing records box. No, no, no. Oh, I do appreciate that. Well, have a bit of a deco and call me back. Thank you, Miss Williams. Oh, Mavis, I'll take these along to DPI, would you? And don't come back without getting them signed, all right? Can you come in, Robert? Uh, yes, Sir Ian. Answer my telephone for me, Mr. Thompson. Anything instant, I'm in with Sir Ian. Will go. Trinity College, Robert. Ah, are we really interested? Uh, one has to admit, the letter does have a curiosity value, sir. The man's a Teutonophile, for heaven's sake. Spent the whole of his life teaching in German universities. Why should we give a damn about Professor Arbel Jones? <sighs> With respect, sir, uh, that is not the point that Miss Winterflood is making. Oh, isn't it? Then what is the point that Miss uh, Winterflood, Winterflood is making? The article referred to by Trinity College uh, bears the copyright date of 1939. Uh, whilst in it, Professor Jones refers to work published by Wittgenstein that didn't appear until last year, 1940. Uh, uh, Robert, I'm afraid the significance of all this eludes me. Uh, oh, uh, Harriet Winterflood's comment here, sir, is that Trinity have noted that Professor Arwell Jones is continuing to work and publish whilst interned and that someone thinks it important enough to attempt to hide that fact by attaching an incorrect copyright date to his much more recent article. Now, this is our man in Dublin, is it? He sent the letter, yes, sir. You know, I'm not really interested in the outpourings of Professor Arwell Jones, Robert. File it. Yes, sir. So, we have six reports of possible fifth column activities requiring action. Yes, sir. Thirty-eight reports to be filed. Right. Swansea, what have you done about that? Uh, Captain Baker, security, is collecting what information he can for us. And I've got DPI chasing a field officer to report on some missing material. Classified? Uh, yes, sir. I believe so. Have you seen this from Central, Robert? I don't think so, sir. What is it? The topography of the borough of Swansea. Within its boundaries, the town possesses a mix of four steel and tin plate works, a copper refinery, oil refinery, chemical works, several iron foundries, miles of Dockland jam-packed with ships, many of them loading high explosives for the Middle East war zone. Um, Central's asking why, during three consecutive nights of saturation bombing, was none of these strategic targets hit, other than the odd glancing blow. The whole force of the attack was concentrated on the town centre and the surrounding housing estates of Town Hill, Manselton and uh, Landor. Oh, leaving 500 dead and 7,000 homeless, I believe. Mm. Terror tactics or something else? Something cleverer, do you suppose? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry. The suggestion is being made that the objective of the attack was to take out a target more important than anything we knew about. I've asked for a briefing, but uh, I'll keep your eyes on that one. 
Yes, sir. Uh, don't pick that up, Miss Flaherty. Oh, thank you, Mr. Davis. Boy, and a hand no here, Give it up to this. Uh, right, Chief. A second box similar to this one. Uh, yes, identical. Uh, they were a pair and always kept together. A duplicate set of records in each. Uh, excuse me, Mr. McDonald. The final test sheets for last Wednesday's burn. Where do you want them? With half my office wall missing, Miss Price, I think that inquiry is somewhat redundant. Yes, sir. Excuse me. Where were the boxes normally? Uh, mind if I... That's it. You're in, Donovan. Hang on, Chief. My hand is slipping. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, sorry, Dr. McDonald. We'll be out of your way in a second. Oh, thank you, Mr. Davis. Yes. Uh, I, I'm sorry, Captain. Yes, you were saying... The record boxes. Where were they kept? Uh, well, one in my lab and one in the safe. My secretary, Miss Price, was responsible for their constant updating. The raid was at its height as she was placing the day's papers into their respective boxes. And when we were hit, she, with great presence of mind, clambered into the safe out of harm's way, but leaving the two record boxes on the floor. Miss Price, when did you realize that one of the boxes was missing? Oh, more or less as soon as I was rescued. Now, this, of course, was some ten hours later. That's how long it took the rescue team to reach us. I would, of course, stress that no blame attaches to Miss Price. Oh, of course. Uh, is it possible to have a word with whoever rescued Miss Price for inside the safe? Well, yes, sir. I imagine so. You! You, can you spare a moment, please? This young man had a very lucky escape, very fortunate indeed. He left the building to go home to look after his aunt only moments before the bomb struck. Good morning, Captain Baker. Good morning, Hugh. I thought perhaps it was you. So, this is where you work. Oh, you two know one another? I'm billeted at Coid Sizen with Hugh's aunt, Mrs. Tresida. Oh, yes, the famous aunt. <laughs> when did you realize that one of the record boxes was missing, Hugh? Oh, it was Muriel, uh, Miss Price, who realized that. I only reported it missing. One was where it had been left, but there was no sign of the other. Was there, Miss Price? Of course, a likely explanation would seem to be that the box was thrown aside by one of the enthusiastic rescuers and was subsequently cleared away with the rub. Oh, we've got two of the house staff searching the various dipping sites. No. Well, we'll take that over now. Uh, do I understand that you still have a duplicate set of the records, Dr. McDonald? Yes, we do. The danger is that the missing copies might fall into wrong hands. Yes, we are aware of that. Well? Uh, well, what? Is Sir Ian interested? Am I to go on with it? Is Sir Ian interested in what, Miss Winterflood? Professor Arwell Jones and the letter from Trinity College, Dublin. Uh, no. Uh, sorry, Harriet. He's filed it. I believe so. The man lacks both subtlety and imagination, Mr. Klein. Maybe so, but we receive up to 500 reports a day, any one of which could be vital to the continuation of the war effort. And with a staff of only 25 officers, this department needs someone who lacks both subtlety and imagination to make the essentially arbitrary decisions as to what we actually investigate. Well, for that job, Sir Ian Maxwell is ideally suited. Well, I think he's wrong. Oh, well, he's paid to be wrong. What do you think? Uh, excuse me. Uh, Robert Klein, yes? Ah, Miss Williams. Uh, who? Major Cunningham. Right, thank you. Uh, no, 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 no. He's worked for us before. That's fine. Uh, ask him to seek out uh, uh, Captain Baker in Swansea, will you? Uh, he's uh, security's man there. Uh, thank you. <laughs> we are sending a retired major to work under a young captain, Miss Winterflood. <laughs> Poor old Baker. What am I going to do about Arwell Jones? Uh, what you told to? Nothing. Bloody ridiculous, Hugh! They'll never find it amongst this lot. Square mile of rubble and they're looking for a tin box. Oh, they're very thorough, these army traps. Oh, daft beggars. This isn't the only rubble tip, you know. It could be anywhere. Uh, it might have shown up in the lab by now. No, I very much doubt it. Hey, come on. Got you back on duty in 15 minutes. Do you want to borrow my bike? Well, what about you? No, I'm going to stroll over to see if it's been handed in at the police station. Oh, that chance. That's well, worth a try. What have I got to lose, Owen? No, oh, what indeed? TTFN! Well, Captain Baker, I... I telephoned London immediately, Major Cunningham, but you were already well on your way here. I'm 
sorry that you've made a long journey for nothing, sir. But I'm sure that you are as relieved as I am that the box has been found and that the matter is at an end. Hmm. And where was it found? At the Central Police Station, sir. It was handed in yesterday. The box being locked and not labelled in any way, the police took no action on it. Have you talked to the man who found it? The police have no record, I'm afraid. However, I've spoken to Dr. MacDonald, the man in charge of the laboratory. He says that none of the paperwork is missing. I'd like to see that box, Baker. Yes, sir. If you think it's necessary. And I need somewhere to stay. Food, freshen up. I'll see what I can arrange, Major Cunningham. Intelligence in London believes that the attack on Swansea targeted the town centre. All else was ignored. And this laboratory is within the area of maximum saturation. Add to this the fact that the laboratory records went missing during the raid, and now they've turned up again, in about the time it might take to reproduce them photographically. Coincidence, Captain Baker? I think a closer look is indicated, don't you? Yes, sir. Then to work. Coid Sison. It means Saxon's Wood. The house is built on the site of an ancient Saxon camp, or so the story goes. It's much too large, of course, and it's probably silly to go on living here with just the three of us. Thank you. But what would become of my 20 young army officers if we left? The three of you being yourself, your husband and your son, is that it? Uh, no. My husband died, unfortunately, just after the outbreak of the war. Ah, sorry. My son Owen is here with me, and my brother's boy Hugh lives here also. I see. And how old are the boys, Mrs. Tresita? Oh, they're young men now. Owen is a fireman, and Hugh is doing special war work of some kind. Indeed. All very secret. Otherwise, I suppose they'd both be in the army, and I'd be here on my own. Except for my 20 officers, of course. We mustn't forget them, must we? Uh -huh. And what's the nature of Hugh's work, Mrs. Tresita? Oh, I'm not sure. Hush, hush, laboratory work of some kind, so Owen tells me. Owen told you that? Oh, not in any detail, of course. Just that Hugh works in some secret establishment near Goat Street. Really? And Hugh lives here to be near his work, is that the idea? Oh, no, no. Hugh came to live here with us before the war, when circumstances made it difficult for him to go on living at home. He's been like a brother to Owen, and something of a good influence. Hugh's so sensible. And Owen isn't? Well, he's a bit like me, I'm afraid. His heart rules his head. Yes, indeed. You wanted to see me, gentlemen? Ah, oh, yes, uh, Hugh. Uh, come in. You know Captain Baker, of course. Oh, yes, sir. My name is Cunningham, Major Cunningham, from the Ministry of Defence. I'm here to investigate the recent air attacks on Swansea. To investigate them? Given the security implications of any air raid on Ministry of Defence property, an on-the-spot investigation is carried out where possible. A routine matter. Just a few questions for all the staff. Now then. Sir, if it's to do with the missing records, I think I should tell you. I went to the Central Police Station yesterday at lunchtime to see if the missing record box had been handed in. Ah, I see. So it is you who recovered the missing box, you. Good work, young man. Uh, but that's just it, Major Cunningham. I didn't recover the missing box. I thought you just said... No, sir, no. What I said was that I went to the police station to see if the box was there. It wasn't. Someone had beaten you to it and had already collected it. Well, that's what I would have assumed, sir, except that according to the sergeant on the desk, no such box had been handed in. There was certainly no mention of it having been collected. Captain Baker, I understood you to say that the box was found at the police station and that they had no record of the person who handed it in. That is what we were told by the officer who returned the records to the laboratory, sir. Who is this officer? Do we have his name? We do. It was leading fireman Alan Davis. Fireman? Yes, sir. Not a policeman? No, sir. I see. I hope I did the right thing mentioning this to you, sir. Yes, Hugh, I think we can say that you did the right thing. Do we know anything about the man who returned the records to the laboratory? Davis? Uh, no. Only that he was involved in the rescue operation at the laboratory. And 36 hours later, he returns with the missing records. <clears throat> well, Captain Baker, I think you should organize an interview with this hero of the hour. Right away, don't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, uh, Hugh, stay a while, please. Sit down. That's it. 
Now, tell me, have you ever discussed the nature of your work with anyone at all outside the laboratory, Hume? No, sir, never. What about girlfriends? Not the chaps at your local? No, sir, I never talk to anyone about my work. Family? My immediate family know that the work is highly secret and they know that I work here in Goat Street. It would be difficult to keep that level of information away from them year on end, wouldn't it? But that's all. That's Mrs. Tresida and Owen, your cousin, of course. Yes, sir. The fireman. Yes, sir. Thank you, you. No need to mention this discussion we've had to anyone. All right? Miss Winterflood, I really am most awfully busy. It will only take a minute, see, and you see, there's information here I think you should be aware of. And since the work has been done, you might as well take a look at what I've come up with. Your line manager is Mr. Klein. But he's only interested in what you tell him to be interested in. That is why Mr. Klein is considered a high flyer, Miss Winterflood. Arwell Jones graduated from Aberystwyth University in 1919 and went immediately to Kiel University. Must I listen to this? Where he undertook postgraduate research into Celtic minorities. In 1921, he married a German girl called Helga Fischer, who was a half-Jewess, her mother's maiden name having been Rosenthal. They have one son. Arwell Jones remained at Kiel University and became a professor in 1931. He and his wife were interned at the outbreak of the war. I'm not interested in the fate of Professor Arwell Jones. He has chosen his bed and must now lie on it. Do you wish to continue? Yes, I do. Very well, young woman. Our records of the International Youth Congress show that this son, Hugo, joined the Hitler Youth Movement when he was 15 and volunteered for the German Army two years later using his mother's name of Fischer. That was in 1938. Mm. I have traced Hugo Fischer further. This morning, Unit 7 confirmed that Hugo Fischer was posted to the Indian Engineering Brigade in Bremen, a Zonderformationen unit. And what, may I ask, is a Zonderformationen unit? It's a foreign unit where non-nationals are sent who choose the army rather than internment. Apparently, Hugo Fischer did not possess German nationality. Apparently. So? Well, that's as far as I've got. A thought has crossed my mind, however. Never mind thoughts, young lady. The facts. All right, we know for a fact, don't we, that Arwell Jones continues to research and to publish whilst interned, which is odd. It seems to be entirely possible that this young man's career in both the Hitler Jugend and subsequently in the German army may have served to make the authorities take it easy with his half-Jewish mother and his British father. Yes. So, why don't the Germans want anyone to know this? Why did they try to suppress the fact that Arwell Jones is being allowed to publish? Why don't they want us to know that a deal has been struck? In short, what is going on? Is that it? Yes. Well, what you have done, Miss Winterflood, is to build a highly tenuous framework out of the action of a German censor. All that you have said is possible. Most things are possible. But your interest in this case stems from one deduction alone, that the false copyright date on Arbel Jones's article was a deliberate action intended to cover up a suspicious ambiguity. Let us look at the matter differently. Let us suppose the printer made a mistake and appended the wrong date, or that Arwell Jones appended the wrong date, or that Jones saw an advanced copy of Wittgenstein's work, or that the German censor mistakenly thought the news of Arwell Jones's continued work important. Then your whole edifice crumbles. There, four explanations that fit the facts, and each is more likely. Am I right? Yes, sir. I hope you don't have a hunch about this one. No, sir. Because I do not employ researchers who have hunches, do I, Miss Winterflood? No, sir. Right. Now, go and do what you're paid to do. Missing persons are part of my brief, sir, Ian. Arbel Jones is not a missing person. We know where he is and we know what he's doing. Just find me the facts, young woman. That is what you're paid to do. Facts, not fictions. Good morning. I told you. He not only lacks subtlety and imagination, he insists on certainties. Uh -huh. He's an empiricalist. Not my word for him. How do I resign? Uh, you enlist in the WAF. Oh. Robert, a word, please. Swansea, who did we send down there? Uh, Major Cunningham, Sir Ian. Any progress? 
Uh, Cunningham has asked for information on leading fireman Alan Davies, and we traced him. It seems Davies once stood on a platform with Sir Oswald Mosley at a meeting in Swansea, in 1935, to be precise. Hmm. Remind me of the significance of this man, Davies. Uh, he's the chap who handed in the missing laboratory records, claiming to have brought them from the police station. Uh, Cunningham established that this is not so. The inference being that this former black shirt stole the lab records uh, under the cover of an air raid? Yes, sir. Well, having done that, why should he run the risk of returning them? Uh, possibly to establish confidence within the laboratory that uh, security had not been breached. Well, that's crude. However, if Davis is a fifth columnist, then the Germans want us to continue with the Swansea project. How important, I wonder, is this work being done in Swansea? Extremely important, sir. It's all in security's memorandum. Why haven't I seen that? It is on your desk, sir. You simply haven't reached it yet, that's uh, all. Well, what is going on in Swansea? A new fuels research program looking for propellants for long-range weaponry, rockets. The Germans were at it before the war, but abandoned their research in 1938. Apparently, we took it up in 1940. Ah, that accounts for the high state of twitch at Central. There is speculation that the Germans knew of this work and intended to destroy it. Well, that's bad enough, but if the progress we've made reaches the enemy, uh, what progress has Cunningham made with this man, Davis? I'm afraid Major Cunningham has temporarily lost sight of them. What? It seems somebody must have tipped the man off and he's fled the town. Good God. I'm quite sure it's only a temporary hit, sir. Uh, they have reason to believe that Davies is holed up somewhere on the Gower Peninsula. Oh, thank heavens. We only collate, Robert. I wouldn't like to be in charge of an I-5 if this man gets away. I gather the army are searching for Davies now, sir. Uh, Central have put uh, Cunningham in charge. I imagine he's in his element. Right, you men, split up. Captain Baker, you take your men towards the dunes. With respect, sir. Respect nothing, sir. The rest of you, follow me. Who's there? Who is it? Who is it? It's me. Hugh. Hugh. Oh, thank God. Wait a moment. I'll open the door. <gasps> Quickly, close the door on him. This is alive with soldiers. Where the hell have you been? I thought you'd never get here. Oh, I don't understand. What is going on? Someone shot me, Hugh. They came to my digs. A sergeant and two men in plain clothes. I made a dash for it. I see. What about the copied records? Did you manage to take them with yes, you? Yes, I got them here in this uh, waterproof bag in case I have to swim out to the boat. Well, what's the plan? Will I be picked up by submarine? No, no, there's no sub. Well, what then? Are you coming with me, or are you staying behind? No, I'm staying here. It's you they're after. So when do I leave? Is it the boat? Well? Sorry, Helen. There isn't going to be any boat. You're not going anywhere. What do you mean, no boat? I don't understand. Now, this is as far as you go, I'm afraid. What the hell are you talking about? Instructions from Cathar. Huh? Orders, I'm afraid. Sorry. Orders? Hill! Hey, hey. Keep still! Over here, Captain Baker! The shot came from inside the barn! Keep your heads down! Over there! Down! Right, lads. Surround the barn. If he decides to shoot it out, let's make sure he doesn't take any of us with him. Move! How are you making out with our Hugo Fisher? Turned up anything interesting in the valleys? Uh, not a great deal, Tommy, I'm afraid. I'm only getting the odd sideways glance at it in between everything else, mm. thanks to Sir Ian. However... Professor Jones and his wife returned to this country in 1921 for the birth of their son. That I have found out. Mm, to uh, secure British nationality for him, presumably. Yes, I dare say. The local registry of births, marriages and deaths shows the boy as having been christened Hugh and not Hugo. <laughs> Patriotic.
According to Semyovsky, there is a pronunciation difficulty within the German language. Hugo is the nearest they can get to saying it. <laughs> no wonder they're such an ill-tempered nation. Look, if you're not interested, Thompson, just go away. What I don't know yet is where he was posted after his training in Bremen. I can't see Sir Ian giving me the time to find out. And why do you want to know? Because I feel certain there's something peculiar about this. Uh-oh, sounds like a hunch to me. You know he doesn't like hunches. It's not a hunch, Tommy. It's a conviction. A conviction that Maxwell's way of working is too arbitrary and that this one is slipping through his fingers. Uh, now, what are you going to do? Follow orders, I suppose, and file it away. Now, good afternoon, uh, Cunningham. Major Cunningham. I'm here to see Robert Klein and Sir Ian Maxwell. They are expecting me. I'll tell Mr. Klein you're here. Uh, don't bother. I know my way. Are you sure this is the truth and not just the official version, Major? It sounds too much like a military solution to the problem for my liking. A bullet in the head is your people's answer to everything. It's the simple truth, Sir Ian. We had the man cornered in a grain store. Rather than face capture, he shot himself. He was lying inside with a pistol by his side. Was he carrying any documents that might implicate him further in the plot? I'm afraid not, sir. Nothing was found that uh, could connect him to the missing records or the laboratory in Goat Street. But you are sure that he was the right man? No doubt about that, sir. We were led to him by a reliable informant. Now, Davis then cut and ran the moment he knew we were onto him. Miss Diggs in Port Tennant was kitted out for receiving and transmitting radio signals, and he was in possession of an array of cameras and lenses. He had used the bathroom as a dark room over the last few days. Making photographic copies of the missing laboratory records, I presume. Well, that appears to make sense. I'm sure Commander Gregory will have more to say about your not bringing him in alive, but our business is the collation of material, and you've helped to sew this one up. Except for one point, sir. And what might that be, Robert? Uh, if Alan Davies was at the centre of a security breakdown, then he was able to direct a pinpoint attack on the new fuels research lab only on information received from elsewhere. And the question that needs to be answered would seem to be, who told Alan Davies what was taking place in Goat Street? And that is detection, Robert, not deduction. Leave such matters to Central. Well, with respect, Sir Ian, the answer to that is quite simple. A cousin of one of the technicians working at the lab in Goat Street was a member of Fire Officer Alan Davis's crew. Information about the lab reached Davis via this one man. Of that, I have no doubt. Do we have the name of this garrulous idiot? Owen Proceder, sir. Very well. I put that in your report too, Robert. No doubt this oath will be put into a position of less trust and diminished comfort. But our job is not to look at consequences, only to discover the facts. Isn't that so, gentlemen? What seems to be the trouble, Mr. Mizzen? Well, they won't listen, sir. They know best. We've worked this mine for 40 years, knows nothing. Steel girders ain't the answer, sir. Stone's the answer, the stone itself. Not a pot nor a shim nor nothing of the kind we're down here before they come to tell us how to do it. Well, let them be and see what happens. Who are they, Mr. Mizzen? Well, you army fellows. You know nothing about cutting stone, and that's for sure. Don't include me, Mr. Mizzen. I don't belong to the engineers. I'm interested in the security of this place, that's all. Been down here digging this old mine since 1937, they have. And they still haven't learned nothing. Five years hard at it and some to go. Well, between you and me, it's the some to go that's worrying the government, Mr. Mizzen. They want this project operational. And I gather they want it quickly. Hence the girders. Uh, well, peace be as to the purpose of it all. You could get the whole of London down here. Not quite. Is that what's behind all this mass evacuation? I've no idea. Your security, though. <laughs> but you don't need to know secrets to stop them getting out, Mr. Mizzen. Well, they'll have to bide a while. we got to cut a two-mile tunnel from here to connect the mine with the GWR. That'll take all of a year, I'd say. Even if you fellas let us do it the way it should be done. I'm quite so... Uh... I, I'm sorry, Mr. Mizzen. I, I've just seen a man I think I recognize. Would you excuse me? Yes, of course. Captain Baker. It's nice to see you. How are things? So, 
This is what they've got you at. Well, well. How long have you been here, Owen? Oh, the best part of a year, sir. They transferred me here from the fire service in March of last year. Lost my exemption, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. How are things at Coit Sizen? Is your mother well? Oh, yes, I'm fine. And what of your cousin, Q? Where's he now? Oh, Hugh's in Bristol. They moved the lad from Swansea and he went with us. He's been out of Tilton for a couple of months now. I came for a pint of the weekends. He's got himself engaged to Dr. McDonald's secretary. How about that? The girl in the safe. That's splendid. Give them my regards when you see them, Owen. I will do. I must, Dash, old chap. You, you'll probably see me about from time to time. I'm with security here. Oh, jolly good. Uh, when I write home, I'll tell them I saw you. Any sign of that worthy doctor, Muriel? Well, he's back from London, and he wants everyone in the meeting room immediately after lunch. How did he get on? Did he say? I don't break confidences. Not even to my fiancé. Oh, quite right. But I gather they gave him a pretty rough ride. We'll have to wait and see what he has to say. I am now aware that the need for security is even greater than ever, if, as some of you may wonder, that is at all possible. Maximum effort from everyone is the only way we will win the race. We have the advantage of momentum from our sustained efforts, whilst the Germans are, well, relatively new to the game. Uh, how long have they been working in this field, sir? Do we know? Well, they restarted their rocket research program six months ago. <coughs> you mean they were working on long-range weapons previously? They were developing new fuels for rockets before the war. That work was abandoned on orders from Hermann Goring, who, uh, perhaps not surprisingly, favoured the development of a long-haul diesel engine for bomb-carrying aircraft. Uh, we took up the research in 1940. <laughs> the sad irony, of course, is that the long-haul engine developed by Goring enabled him to reach Swansea and cripple our laboratory last year. So how far are we ahead of him, sir? Uh, this is a matter that I find deeply distressing. Intelligence in London says that the Germans restarted their program not where they left it in 1938, but where we'd taken it to in 1941. How could that be possible, sir? Security. We have to accept the fact that a complete record of all the work we did in Swansea reached the enemy. And obviously, we cannot allow such a thing ever to happen again. So be on your guard. We're all on trial here in Bristol. Our head of department this morning introduced me to a most unpleasant man named McGregory. And it has been made clear to me by him that any further breach of security will put my head on the chopping block and possibly yours as well. Right. Back to work. And please remember what I've said. Would you stay for a moment, Hugh? This is for your ears alone, Hugh. London reasons that the fireman Davis couldn't have been operating alone. It's feared that someone within our laboratory was passing information to him. And it is for that reason that our original team has been broken up. However, you and Miss Price are being kept with the project. I gather Major Cunningham told you the assistance you gave him in the detection of Alan Davis. Well, that was decent of him. Uh, what about Miss Price? I'm sorry, Hugh. Well, they're happy for her to continue with the project. Well, she's a secretary, Hugh. Anyway, that man Cunningham will be arriving here during the next few days. He's asked to see you. Personally, I'd rather not have him on my back, so I want you to give him all the help you can. Cooperate totally, hold nothing back. Will you do that? Oh, yes, of course. Well, you can rely on me, sir. Uh, thank you. With London sitting on my neck, you've no idea what it means to me to have someone I can trust. To the point, Miss Winterflood. I am sifting as no man has sifted before. Mr. Klein, I think I know why we've not been able to locate Hugo Fisher. Oh, really? Who is Hugo Fisher? Professor Arwell Jones' son. He took his mother's name of Fisher when he joined the German army. Oh, my God, Harriet. You're not still jitterbugging around with that one. Do you want to know what happened to him, or don't you? No. 
As I recall, Sir Ian filed Professor Jones in a very pointed manner over a year ago. <laughs> However, it will waste less of my time if I listen. So tell me, what became of Hugo Fisher? Briefly. He deserted. It's on this list here. Hugo Fischer disappeared from his Sonderformationen unit in Bremen in August 1939, having been in the army for just under a year. That explains why we couldn't trace him further. The parents were arrested two days later. I'm visiting the sins of the son unto the father. Unless that arrest was simply to confirm the impression the Germans wanted us to form, i.e. that Hugo had deserted. Uh, too labyrinthine. Where is he now? Not known. Interested? Mm. I reckon he'd do one of two things. He might have decided to stay in Germany because his parents were imprisoned there. And risk being shot? Or he would have headed for Great Britain. Or he'd aim for a neutral country. America, Switzerland, the Gold Coast, Sweden. But this was just before the declaration of war, remember? And he did have a British passport. Okay. Check it out with immigration. Now, refugees were flooding in then. They tried to keep a check on everybody. But he wasn't a refugee, was he? He was simply a British national returning home to his own country. Even so, give it a spin. <laughs> Don't tell Sir Ian. I sanction this. Yes, Jones. Hugh Jones. Or Fisher with a C. Hugo Fisher. Yes, it would be the same man. And that is why I chose you, young man. You will be my eyes and ears while I maintain this watching brief. I see. You've no idea, Hugh, how good it is to be back in harness again. Swansea could have been a disaster, but it's turned out well for me. Whitehall was pleased with the outcome. I'm transferred to security. That's a reward, as I see it. Out of the hands of administrators. Back in the field. Uh, congratulations, sir. And the Alan Davis spy ring? What of it? Well, I take it where... You're investigating that? It's been taken care of. Former members of the British League in South Wales will be uh, uncomfortable for a while. Now, tell me. Tell you what? Your observations on Dr. MacDonald's operation. What can I say? You have the instinct for security. A man has it or he hasn't. Those who have, notice, suspect. So, start at the top. At the top? Dr. MacDonald. Tell me what you think of his administration. Well, he is rather absent-minded. Yes. And is not very well organized. Yes. But, but that's all. Except that he does take paperwork home, which is absolutely against the rules, Major Cunningham. No documents should ever leave the laboratory. Does he indeed? Precisely the same sort of thing was happening in Swansea. Go on. No, but apart from that, he, he works hard and is totally dedicated. Your loyalty is commendable, but unnecessary, Hugh. There is the business of visitors. Of course, I've never been happy about that. Surely to God he doesn't allow civilians into the lab. I'm afraid so, sir. In Swansea, on several occasions, friends of his working in similar areas of research were given a guided tour of the laboratory and have listened to a most detailed account of what was going on. Good God! Oh, you see, for Dr. MacDonald, there is no world outside the laboratory. It doesn't see the rocket as a ballistic missile. It's a scientific problem that has to be solved. That's all. <laughs> Boffins. Yes. Hugh, I'm going to ask you to do something for me, and you don't have to agree to do it. If I give you a telephone number in London to contact, will you report direct to me on the names of any further visitors and on any paperwork that leaves the lab? Yes, I could do if you think it essential. I do. In the meantime, I'll need the names of those other visitors who turned up in Swansea. Oh, I, I couldn't remember. Miss Price might have them in the office diary, of course. Oh, yes. The young woman in the safe. Is it possible for you to get that from her? Oh, I think so, Major Cunningham. She'll give them to me if I ask. We're due to be married in December. Really? It's December the 18th. My cousin Owen is to be the best man. Owen Procedo? Yes. After all the trouble he caused you in Swansea? December the 18th? Oh, that's marvellous. Just in time for a Christmas honeymoon. Now, are you still all right for best man? Oh, yes, of course. A leave and Mr. Mizzen permitting. It's uh, practically impossible to get any time off for the moment. I, I haven't been home for months. But uh, things will be better by then. 
There's a great big push on to get the thing finished at the moment. Who is Mr. Bizzle? Oh, he's my ganger. Marvellous old chap. Hates the military. <laughs> <laughs> he's been where I'm at for over 20 years. He can't stand what they're doing to the place. Well, neither can I for that matter. Oh, it's just jolly hard work as far as I'm concerned. Hard work? Yes, cutting stone. I don't know what's so secret about cutting stone, but I'm not supposed to talk about it. Why not? Muriel. God knows. Millions of tons of the stuff has been leaving there in a never-ending stream of lorries literally for years. Goodness knows what they're doing with it. Some say it's for shoreline defences. But why they're building galleries down there, I really don't know. Anyway, there are 17,000 of us hard at it. <laughs> so they must want it for something, mustn't they? There are how many of you at it? 17,000, all told. Mostly miners from the northeast and from South Wales. They rounded up everyone who wasn't exempted or serving. <laughs> Where'd you all live, for God's sake, all 17,000 of you? In three huge camps at the head of the mine. Oh, look, look. I'm not supposed to tell you anything about it, so let's talk about something else, shall we? Hey, guess who I saw the other day? Captain Baker. Never. Well, who was Captain Baker? Well, you met him in Swansea, after the raid. A tall, good-looking army captain. Oh, yes. Mm, he was billeted at Coid Saison. Mother thought he was the bee's knees, didn't she? You... <laughs> she did, rather. Where did you bump into him, Owen? He showed up at the place where I'm working. Hey, what if we invited him to the wedding? Perhaps he'd have a word with Mr. Mizzen for me. Make sure I get time off to be best man. What do you think? <laughs> Why not? Great! Right, we'll have another drink on the strength of that. It's my round. Drink up. Oh. Yeah, Muriel, tin again. Oh, yes, you go in. Right, I won't be a kick. I bet I know where that is. Where what is? That place Sir Wynne was talking about. There's only one mine. It could be around here. It's where all the stones for the city of Bath came from. Oh? Where might that be? Where's the Monkton Farley? It goes back hundreds of years. It's vast, apparently. Close by Bradford upon Avon. How do you know all that? I listen to careless talk. Yeah, well, you shouldn't. Don't you ever get curious to know what's going on? Muriel, what's going on is a war. We should just keep our heads down and get on with our work. I'll bet you what you like, that's where he is. Will you stop it? I wonder what on earth is that up to. Have you seen this on the sinking of convoy PQ-17? Uh, yes, sir, Ian, I have. Apparently, that report that Tirpitz had left her anchorage at Carfjord to intercept the convoy was bogus and intended only to panic the Admiralty, which it did. I'm sure our briefing was in no way responsible for that, sir, Ian. Well, nevertheless, they withdrew PQ-17's naval escort. <laughs> I'm at a loss to understand why they did that, sir. And apparently, the sea lords considered the naval ship's escort to be more valuable than the merchant vessels they were protecting. So, they removed them to the safety of the western approaches, leaving convoy PQ-17 to the mercy of the Luftwaffe and the U-boats. Twenty-four out of a total of thirty-six ships were sunk. No action is to be taken for obvious reasons. <laughs> Too bloody embarrassing being foremost amongst them. Are we in any way to blame, sir? Of course not. It's facts we look for, and we correctly reported the facts. Did we? We reported the fact that a report had been received. If the Admiralty chose to take the fact of a report as the report of the fact, well, that's their problem. That's not our responsibility, Robert. Yes, sir. Major Cunningham is here, sir. Cunningham? Uh, from security. What's he doing here? Uh, we asked for a briefing, sir. Uh, oh, oh, yes. Send him in. Isn't this the fellow that the security boys commended for that Swansea debacle? Uh, yes, sir. He's due to be posted, I gather. Huh. Missing the uniform, I suppose. Good morning, gentlemen. Morning, Major. Do sit down. Thank you. I see Commander Gregory is to lose you, Major Cunningham. Yes, sir. They were looking for volunteers who served out East before. Well, well, back in khaki, eh? Splendid, splendid. Uh, so what of... Bristol? Mm, I I'm preparing a report for Central. I'm confident of the situation there now, sir. You'll see from my report that we have our own man there now, and he reports direct to security. Hmm. Yes, uh, Who is your man in Bristol? The lab technician whose contribution in Swansea made the trapping of Alan Davis possible. He uses the code name Denmark on my instructions. Uh, uh, well, Robert, you deal with this. Get me something that I can tell Central. Minimize the cloak and dagger stuff. At least, don't rub it in. Just give them three facts. Easily digested. Very good, sir. I should say, Sir Ian, that my own report is critical of the head of the Bristol team, Dr. MacDonald. Fine, fine. Security is not our concern. Thank God. 
But, sir... Uh, Major, I know Sir Ian is concerned about the Bristol project. Can you tell me, is Dr. MacDonald aware that Whitehall has a strong lobby in favour of bombs and bullets, and that the slightest mishap down there could jeopardise the rocket project completely? That, Robert, is MacDonald's problem, not ours. Uh, with respect, sir, it could affect the course of the war. Robert, everything affects the course of the war to some greater or lesser degree. Let's not detain the Major any longer, shall we? We must get on. And before he'd even plucked up enough courage to ask Muriel to go to the pictures with him, such was his concern for her that, and I remember this well, with the streets of Swansea ablaze and with buildings collapsing all around him, Hugh returned to where he knew Muriel was trapped and directed rescue teams to where he hoped they would find her, which they did. And they found her sitting in a safe place. Oh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses to drink a toast to the bride and groom. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And do the reports match, Mr. Klein? Absolutely like twins. Well, what do we deduce, then? It would appear, my dear Thompson, that Prosper has stolen German prototype plans for us that they, first of all, stole from us. <laughs> it is beautifully circular. The same information has been smuggled both ways across the channel. I shall have to tell Sir Ian, and he'll have to tell Central. Tell Central what? That Bristol's leaking. That whatever Cunningham claimed, it's leaking badly. I cannot believe what I've been told. You can't close the project down. A month to six weeks more is all we need. Whose idea is this? I'm sorry, Dr. MacDonald, but I've been obliged to tell the government that the best way to slow down the German progress is in fact to close down the lab in Bristol until a complete overhaul of security is effected. But this is madness. It simply isn't possible that security in Bristol has been breached. What you choose to believe is of no consequence, Dr. MacDonald. <sighs> You will discontinue operations in Bristol, and you and your entire team will be investigated. Oh. You let us down in Swansea, and you let us down again in Bristol. But you don't see A letter real. has already been sent to you. However, seeing that you have chosen to burst in here, I will tell you of its contents. You are to report to the Savoy Hotel every morning at 10 o'clock until further notice. And that means until this business has been cleared up. Don't think of leaving the country, Dr. MacDonald. But surely I must be You may go now, Dr. MacDonald. I shall protest. Yes, I'm sure you will. Good day. Uh, now, MacDonald's team. What will we do about Baker's request that he move Denmark to Tall Fern? Well, he did a first-class job for us in Bristol, sir. We wouldn't have made the progress we have done without him. Unusual for a specific request. The man is good. Word gets around, I suppose, even in security. <laughs> Right. Transfer to Tall Fern and report to Captain Baker. Inform Monkton Farley immediately. Yes, sir. Now, let's see. What about those submarine bases? If you are here to persuade me to take more of the military than I'm already doing, Miss Winterslud, then this time I really must be firm. Coit Sison is bursting at the seams with the Army Medical Corps at the moment. There is simply no more room at the inn. Can I offer you a cup of tea, Miss Winterflood? Do sit down. Oh, thank you. And no, thank you, I won't have a cup of tea. And no, I'm not here to ask you to accommodate more Army personnel. Oh, thank heaven for that. Well, shall we sit anyway? Yes. So, Miss Winterflood. Well, uh, part of my work involves the tracing of missing people. Really? And that can include people who were trapped on the continent at the outbreak of war, of whom we've lost sight. According to my research, before your marriage, you were Eleanor Jones, is that correct? Yes, I was. How very clever of you. Do go on. You lived in the village of Dunvant, which is five miles west of here? Yes. I have relatives living there still. If I have the right family, you were the sister of Arwell Jones, who was professor of Celtic studies at Kiel University before the war. How on earth do you do it? How long is it since you had news of your brother, Mrs. Tresida? Oh, well, 
there were one or two letters early on in which he and his wife Helga were being terribly brave and cheerful. But nothing for a long time now. They were taken forcibly from a Spanish merchant ship that was about to set sail from Kiel for Newcastle. They were trying to escape. That was in August 1939. Do you know of their whereabouts, Miss Winterflood? I'd be terribly grateful if there is anything you can tell me. Anything at all. Well, we know that two days before their arrest, their son, Hugo, deserted from his regiment. But despite this, and despite the foiled escape plan you mention, your brother has continued to work and publish up to the latter part of 1940. That we know. But that was more than two years ago now, and there's been nothing since. At that time, they were being held at an Untersuchungsgefängnis close by Kiel. Uh, that's a detention centre for non-criminal offenders and considered to be quite a soft option when compared with other places of detention. Oh, good. I am relieved to hear that. Orwell was such a kindly, gentle man, in no way capable of withstanding brutality. <laughs> but what of their son, Hugo, Mrs. Tresida? Do you know what became of him? Oh, yes. Do you know where he is now? I do. Are you in touch with your nephew? Oh, yes. He writes regularly. We've been in constant touch ever since he arrived home from Germany in 1939. What? You must realize that the boy is British and not German. He was born right here in Dunvant, like the rest of us. He was christened Hugh and not Hugo, you see. He is British to the core, Miss Winterflood, and proud of it. I see. And where is Hugh now? Oh, the place he was working at in Bristol closed down for some reason or other a month or so ago, and he was moved elsewhere. I have his address here somewhere. Would you like to have it, Miss Winterflood? He would be so pleased to have news of his parents. Yes. I would rather like to get in touch with him, if I may. Yes, here we are. Now, they're staying with a Mr. and Mrs. Mizzen in the village of Monkton Farley in Wiltshire. Number seven, Bank Row. What you can be finding to do living out there in the countryside, I can't imagine. Tell Sir Ian, Miss Winterflood. Hugo Fisher is in Moncton Farley, sir. Who is? Hugo Fisher, a German national, also known as Hugh Jones, is working at Moncton Farley, Sir Ian. He's where? In the mine. But that's where Tall Fern is. Precisely, sir. My God. What's Tall Fern? An arms bunker, vast. It's where they're storing the armaments for the forthcoming invasion, but he can't be Robert, not actually in the bunker. Surely, at the moment, no one knows exactly what he's doing in Moncton Farley, but I think we should waste no time in finding out. How the devil did he get there? We have no idea, sir. Oh, dear. What we do know is that Hugh Jones is Hugo Fisher, a deserter from the German army. And he's in Winston's bunker. Been there for some time, sir. Well, you better get hold of security immediately. They can alert their man at the mine. Uh, yes, do that, Robert. Better not keep it to ourselves. Yes, sir. Let's hope you haven't left things too late, Miss Winterflood. Hasn't it taken you rather a long time to uncover this fact? I was nicely on the trail of the Jones-Fisher business, too. You were years. saying, Harriet. God. Nothing, Sir Ian. Are you awake? I'm fine. Hey, what is it? Hush now. Go to sleep. Won't you tell me, please? It's nothing. Well, it's just that I've never told anyone about <clears throat> my having been brought up in Germany, that's all. And now they've found out about it. Suddenly I find myself classified as a security risk, threatened with being kicked out of here. Why should you be? You came home to Britain to do your bit for your country. Now, what's wrong with that? Nothing that I can see. 
But who knows what others might think? What others? Security people. <laughs> I'm a former German soldier, and I'm working in the largest arms dump in the world. It covers an area of more than 10 square miles underground. There are 12 million tons of high explosives stored beneath our very feet. 3,000 men working down there at any given time. I had no idea. Can't see the security people letting me go on working there, can you? You've done nothing wrong, though. No. It's hardly your fault you were brought up in Germany. So what does it matter? Well, I'm... Vulnerable, I suppose. I've sworn loyalty to the German state. But you were a child then. Yes. But when you become a man, you don't always put away childish things, even if you try. They stay with you. What things? Loyalties. My loyalty. It's made me do things I regret grow up, see the consequences. Then put it all behind you. You're in Britain now. Yes. Why not talk to Captain Baker? Perhaps he'll be able to help you. Yes. No. No, sir. The man's reliability and patriotism are beyond question, Commander. His sole aim is to contribute everything he possibly can to the war effort. His work underground at Monkton Farley is, I believe, faultless. And the assistance he has given me in day-to-day -day security matters has been invaluable. You asked for him, Baker. Yes, sir. And he's given me no cause to regret that request. Were you aware that he had dual nationality? No, sir. Or that he'd served in the German army? Deserted, sir. No, I've no idea. However, when I told him that we were aware of his identity, he offered to resign and to leave the mine immediately. Why hadn't he told you? It's not something he is proud of, sir. We are dealing with emotions here. He felt sure that the tell of his forced conscription into the German army would result in possible detention or internment of some kind. He desperately wants to help his country, sir. As such, he makes an excellent operative. How long has he been at the mine, did you say? More than a year, sir. Yes. To be honest, Baker, I don't like it. You have no suspicions? None, sir. And his young wife is pregnant, sir. He fears separation. Oh, come, come, Baker. This is not a civil service. Would you stake your reputation on him? That's the question. Yes, sir. My function at the mine would have been a great deal less effective if it had not been for the contribution of Hugh Jones. Hmm. A bit hard, don't you think, sir? If we were to penalise him simply because his father chose to work in Germany before the war. My sentiments entirely, Commander. Very well, Captain Baker, keep him. But I want him investigated. Thank you, sir. Who recruited him? Oh, Major Cunningham from the Clayton's office, sir. Memo him to see us, will you? Major Cunningham is out of the country at the moment, sir. He's debriefing prisoners in the Middle East, I believe. Who's next, Sergeant? Bogus Selevsky, Major. The pole who blew the bridge at Alam El Halfa. We've had him in solitary for the past three weeks. Bring him in, Sergeant. Next man, Corporal. All right, lad. Oh, come along. Sit there. No, sit there. Name. Name. And this man does speak English, doesn't he, Sergeant? He does, sir. Name. Listen to me, Zelieski. You escaped a firing squad at Alarm Mel Alpha because you offered to talk. If you've changed your mind, that's fine by me. It'll take me about three minutes to drum up another firing squad and we'll take it up where we left it, shall we? Before we do that, I'll tell you what we know about you. All right. Just so you don't get any fancy ideas about dying a hero's death and taking your secrets to the grave. Your name is Vogush Zalieski. You were born in Warsaw in 1915. You worked at a rolling mill in the 1930s and later in a steelworks in the Ruhr in Germany. In 1938, you joined the German army and trained as a saboteur. <laughs> right, lad? 
Have it your way. You were caught behind British lines without uniform and found to be armed with a pistol. That's good enough for me. Take him away, Sergeant. You know what to do with him. Prisoner, stand up. Come out, turn. Oh, come on, you heard me, lad, about turn. Uh, yeah, my, my name is Bogus Stalyeski. I was recruited into the German army in June 1938. Hmm, now we're getting somewhere. What unit did you join and where were you posted? I was sent to a Zonderformationen, the Indian Engineering Brigade in Bremen. Zonder? Zonderformationen, a unit for non-nationals. Thank you. I want the name of every man you can remember who was serving there with you. Every man? Start with your own platoon. Oh, uh, uh, Hans Axel, Victor Dort, Elphick Erhardt, Hugo Fischer, Werner Gunther, Martin Ah, Hugo. Ich nehme an, dass Sie wissen möchten, was der Commander Gregory gestern in London gesagt hat. My name is Hugh Jones, Captain Baker. I was born in this country and I was christened in this country. I've forgotten that I once spoke German. And the Hitler youth who swore to fight for the fatherland under the death? Have you forgotten him also? Cabling. These are plans. I've approved them. Please run a multi-core to all galleries. Schnell. Ugh. Paperwork, Sergeant. Yes, sir. The army fights for a day and writes it up for the rest of the week. Do you know where it all goes? No, sir. Into metal trucks under St. James's Park, the Admiralty, Piccadilly. <laughs> this war is generating tunnels of reports. Nothing is lost or ever referred to again. Administration. Here's where the war is won. A man strikes a bargain for his life. Information is gleaned. We follow it up. Take out a platoon. An armored car. Action. Yes, sir. Then we write it up. And everything else. And the tunnels of paper under Whitehall and Piccadilly grow longer and longer. Wouldn't mind seeing them myself, sir. What? You're not a son of the desert, Sergeant Roberts? Oh, sir, no. I'd be off tomorrow if I could. I envy you, Major Cunningham. I you. Well, that's an end to it. I'm recalled and you stay. Where will you be off to next? Anywhere but Whitehall, I hope. As far as they're concerned, I'm just passing through. Oh, be a sport, Hugh. You could do it easily. You're well in with old Mizzen. And that fellow Baker seems pretty matey. Surely between them they could organize something for me. What do you say, Hugh? Will you try for me? I can't, Owen. It's not up to me who works where. And you're a miner, not an electrician or a joiner. Oh, well, you've been saying for weeks that you can't get enough men for that cable job that you're doing. Well, I'm volunteering. I can pull cable with the best of them. Please, Hugh. If you don't help me, I'll be transferred to the coal mine. Think of it. The 15th of December is only just two weeks from now. Now, come on, Hugh, be a sport. <sighs> Look, if you fail, then okay. At least you'd have done your best for me. So, what have you got to lose? All right, Owen. I'll have a word with Mr. Wilson. Oh, thanks, Hugh. I knew you would. Yeah, but don't go building your hopes on it. Because I don't think you will agree. Okay? Uh, just try, Hugh. It was in this morning's bundle, Sir Ian. Hugo Fisher, that's our Hugh Jones, trained in Bremen with a man who was taken prisoner at Alam al mm -hmm. Now, this man, Zaleski, he was interrogated by... Uh, Major Raymond Cunningham. Ah, yes. All the facts already known to us fit perfectly, sir. Mm. Who you see, Miss Robert? Uh, yes, sir. What was the unit? Zonder Formation, sir. Have we come across that before? Sir? The, um, the role of such a unit. What was it? Well, we believed it was just a corps of foreign nationals fighting for the Germans, but according to Cunningham, their main function is espionage and sabotage. Sabotage behind enemy lines. Our lines, that is. Meaning that Martin Farley has a trained enemy saboteur on its staff? Yes, yes sir. Uh, have we alerted security? 
You may remember we informed them, sir. Uh, they contacted their man there, and he gave Hugh Jones a clean bill of health. You must be mad. Oh, well. As long as we've reported the facts, there's nothing more we can do. Come and see Ryan, Foucault. I'm sorry, Captain Baker, but the joke really is wearing a bit thin. If you want to talk to me, then do so in English, if you please. It's no joke, Hugo. It's quite the reverse. Things couldn't be more serious. Or more dangerous for both of us. I don't understand. The work you've been supervising, is it completed? Yes. All galleries and sections are now interconnected by telephone on a ring circuit cable as instructed. You ran a multi-core cable? Yes, sir. How many pairs of cable did you use in hooking up the telephone? 98, as specified. Leaving two pairs of unused wires, is that correct? It is. Why the spare pairs, do you suppose? If a line goes down, we have spares already run. A nice thought, Hugo, but not the reason, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, Captain Baker, but I'm afraid I don't understand. One spare pair of wires will carry a detonator circuit. Yes, indeed. They will arrive shortly and you will install them yourself. What the hell are you talking about? Why should we be installing detonators? To understand that, you'll have to ask yourself some simple questions, Hugo. In 1940, when you'd passed information about the location of McDonald's laboratory to Alan Davis, and the Luftwaffe had raised the center of Swansea in order to destroy it, and you implicated Davis as instructed, who let you go before sending in the troops to find the man dead in the barn in Gower? I don't understand a word you're saying. The Hast Ir Commandant. What is the name of your field commander? I have no idea what you're talking about. Qatar. How? No one else could know that. Yes, you go. Me. You were handed over to me in 1940. Since then, I have controlled and organized your activities in this country. Who was it told you to shop Davis to Cunningham and MacDonald to Cunningham? You? Hmm. Now, your new orders. We are to blow up the Mountain Farley Arms Complex. What? And the most difficult part of that operation has already been completed. Namely, the running of cables throughout the mine to link up the detonator. You did a first-class job, Hugo. And right on time. Captain Baker, there are 12 million tons of high explosives stored down here. Will the men working in the ground be given time to get out? Get out to where, for God's sake? This will be the biggest explosion the world has ever known. We'll blow a hole so big, the city of Bath will tumble in at one end and the Bays is in the other. We're going to blast the south of England out to sea. But you and I will be safely gone well out of the way when this happens. Well, of course. The shell has already been manufactured that contains a timing device that will give us 30 minutes to get away before the lid comes off this place. Where is the shell? But there aren't any detonators yet. There will be. All will be delivered and installed well within the time we have at our disposal. Think about it, Hugo. All the Allied eggs are here in this one basket. The invasion of Europe will come at any moment now. And with the Allied forces stretched across many fronts, we will remove their armaments at one fell stroke. The entire invasion force on land, sea and in the air will be left with hardly a bomb or a bullet between them. The only difficulty I had in preparing this operation arose because our high command could not believe the British and Americans could be so foolish. With one blow, we can turn the tide for Germany. Slaughtering tens of thousands in one almighty bang to achieve it. That's war, old chap. Kill or be killed. I want no part of it. You're killing innocent civilians. You didn't say that before Swan's issue. You killed plenty then. I had no idea then. I have now. I'll have no part of it. Hugh, I can get on the phone and denounce you right now. London will believe me. They have all the evidence already. You might say, I am the dam holding it back. If I step aside, 
say I was wrong to have spoken up for you? You're dead. I'd take you with me. No one would believe you, Hugh. My record is impeccable. I don't care, then. Do what you want. But you can connect your own damn detonators. Ah. You can't, can you? If I refuse to do it, you're sunk. There's no one else to help you. Do you know where your parents are at this moment, Hugo? Yes. It was agreed to substantiate that they'd be held at an Untersuchungsgefängnis in Kiel, I believe. Where they have enjoyed many privileges in return for your services to the Reich. Yes? Not for much longer. I have only to report your non-cooperation and your parents will be moved to a concentration camp. I can arrange that. It's your decision. If you refuse to cooperate now, who knows what might happen? Actually, I do know what will happen. But I'm sure you'd rather not contemplate it. Thank you, Hugo. You may go. I'll tell you the moment the detonators and the shell have made their way into the mine. In the meantime, carry on with your normal duties and please, don't do anything foolish, will you? You have far too much to lose. Oh, uh, What's the matter? Are you all right? Oh, oh, it's nothing. John Henry's off on a route march again, full pack and army boots. Oh. He sleeps all day and turns somersaults all night. The little perisher. Oh, I'm fine. Oh, just go to sleep, okay? Are you all right? Tomorrow morning. Yes? I want you to pack your bags and move back to Swansea to your mother's house, all right? What? I'm not going to let you have our baby in this tumble-down cottage with no one other than Mrs. Mizzen to look after you. It's simply not on, okay? But we agreed that I was to stay here to have the baby. I've changed my mind. I want you to go. You do understand that whatever I do is done for you. Yes, but... Don't you? Yes. Tomorrow, then. First thing, you'll go to your mother's. But why? Please. When will I see you? I I'll try and make it over in a week's time. Please. All right. You do understand, don't you? Yes, yes. It's all done for the best. Now, two minutes ago, Mizzen called me into his office, told me my work wasn't up to standard, and that he'd signed my transfer papers to Bethesda Pit in the Swansea Valley. It's a bad show. I'm sorry. Oh. What the hell does he mean, my work is not up to standard? You've supervised almost everything I've done since I moved over to maintenance. Have you seen anything wrong with my work? These things happen, Owen. Well, maybe it's all for the best, who knows? Well, will you talk to Mr. Mizzen for me? Ask him to reconsider? If he signed the order, Owen, there's nothing anyone can do. You're on your way, and that's an end to it. I can't help you. I have to go, okay? Damn. Unmanned plane, sir. Its engine cut out shortly after it crossed the south coast. When it fell to earth, it exploded. And no one was hurt. It fell on open ground. A kind of flying bomb. A rocket? Uh, not as such, sir. Long... Good, good. Well, we must be clear in our terminology, Robert. 
I wouldn't want the facts misrepresented. Uh, no, Sir Ian. A bomb, not a rocket. So, no reflection on security. Good, good. I uh, presume this information will be classified. Of course, if they send any more, that'll be difficult. And lives may be lost. Yes, yes, yes. Never mind the speculation, Robert. Three facts easily digested. Yes, Sir Ian. Maxwell. Uh, yes. Yes, thank you. I shall inform him. Robert, you have a visitor. Major Cunningham. He's on his way up. I thought he was in Africa. Oh, so did I. You didn't send for him? Well, no, sir. Oh. Well, I assume somebody did. We better see him. How far have you got with it? All bar three of the detonators are in place and connected. The last one in gallery 17 will go into the change of shift. Is the shell in place? Gallery 12. Rack 81. The shell is within feet of the cable block. Telephone me the moment it's connected and we'll start the timer running. Better get it right, Hugo. It's irreversible. Mr. Klein, I have been recalled from embarkation leave. I would like to know why. This is beyond me too, Major Cunningham. I have the telegram. If you didn't send it, who did? I did. But you memoed Major Cunningham to see me? Yes. May I have your reason? Hugo Fisher. Of that matter is filed, Miss Winterflood. It, it is out of our hands. It's not filed as far as I'm concerned, Mr. Klein. Major, would you read this out to Mr. Klein, please? It's from your report on the interrogation of Bogus Selyevsky. What? What's going on well, just here? Just a moment. This section here. Zelyevsky also identified the following names. All under Fomationen members. Yes. Yeah. And among those names is... Hugo Fisher. Now listen to this from the collator's office. Jones, Hugh, born Dunvant, Swansea. Took mother's maiden name and enlisted in German army as Hugo Fisher before deserting to Britain. Has undertaken war work in Goat Street Laboratories, in Bristol University, and in Monkton Farley, Tall Fern. Hugh Jones. I recruited a Hugh Jones. Yes. And you also came across him in the information given to us by Bogus Selyevsky. Jones? Is this Hugo Fisher? He is. But the Zonda for Mationen specialize in espionage and sabotage. My God. I sent him to Bristol. And the Bristol project was closed down because of espionage. And the Swansea project was destroyed because of espionage. Denmark, of all the... Do we know where he is now? Mr. Klein does. Moncton Farley. Tell Major Cunningham what Moncton Farley is, Robert. It's the Allies' arms dump for Operation Overlord. It's the biggest bunker in the world. Hugh Jones is there. And for God's sake, get him out of there. Unfortunately, security are happy with the situation. They have been told the facts and Sir Ian has closed the file. The collator's office is no longer interested. Damn the office. I'm reopening that file now. Mr. Klein, I suggest you get on the telephone to security's man down there and tell him I'm on my way I'll now. I'll have to get this cleared by Sir Ian. Could take weeks. And I can't take that risk. But security cleared him. We'll be treading on interdepartmental doors. For God's sake, Robert, can't you make your own decision for once in your life? Mr. Thompson, a car for Major Cunningham, immediately. Oh, yes, straight away, now. Are we all set? Is everything completed? Yes, it's all connected. All I have to do is start the timer in the shell. Wait till the shift changes, then prime it. That'll give you just 30 minutes to put as much distance as you can between yourself and this place before the lot goes up. Right, then. This is where I pull rank on you and get the hell out of here. Go to you. And good luck. Evening, Mr. Jones. Everything all right, sir? Oh, yes, everything's fine, thank you, Charlie. I want to take some humidity readings, if that's all right, old chap. Oh, help yourself, sir. I'll take them for you, if you like. No, 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 I can manage fine, thanks. Yeah, you carry on with what you're doing, Charlie. I'll be out of your way in just a couple of minutes. Right, sir. Now then. Here we go. Red. 
Black lead to terminal one. Black lead to terminal two. And off we go. Everything all right, sir? to Monkton Folly. Uh, you want the quick way or the pretty route, sir? The quickest, Sergeant. In a hurry. Uh, turn left of the bridge in Bradford upon Avon and left again of the Pack House Inn. That'll get you there, sir. How long will it take me to arrive? Depends on how fast you drive, sir. About half an hour, give or take a minute or so. Thank you. Mrs. Minton, open the door! Open the door! Hey, what's the fuss, boy? What's the matter with you? Into the car. Get Mrs. Minton and get into the car. But don't bloody stand there gaping, man. Do as I say, now! Well, she's not here. She's gonna get the midwife. A midwife? What for? What does she want the midwife for? Well, your missus come home. She been at words with her man. Come home to have her baby. She's upstairs now, well on. Well on? What, what do you mean? Oh, great heavens, no! Hey! Hey! Your pass! You didn't show your pass! What the hell is the matter with him? Hello? Tall fan. Uh, can I speak to your security officer, please? Captain Baker? He's not there. When are you expecting him? Uh, I see. Is there anyone else I can speak to? Hello, Mr. Jones. Back again, old sir. Here, here, what the hell are you doing? You can't remove shells from the racks without signing from them. Get out of here, Charlie. It's going to be an explosion. Can I see your pass, sir? Cunningham, security. I want the man in charge, Captain Baker, immediately. Uh, Captain Baker left about half an hour ago, sir. He didn't say when he'd be back. Then let me speak to his deputy. Uh, well... I'm not sure who's on today. Very well. Where's Hugh Jones? Oh, the shift engineer. Oh, I think he's a bit busy, sir. Been rushing in and out. I'll see if I can get hold of him. Girls, that was lovely. Good morning, Mrs. Walker. I'm sorry to interrupt your class, Miss Misson, but you have a visitor. A visitor? A gentleman's waiting to see you in my office. Hugh Jones. He says his name is Hugh Jones. Good Lord. You weren't expecting him? No, I wasn't. Would you like me to send him away? No. But he's my father. Mum told me you died in the war. Later, she said you'd disappeared around the time of D-Day. You'd worked in Moncton Farley, something had happened, and you disappeared. No one would tell her anything. They were confused times. It was under that confusion that I crossed to Ireland, from there to Portugal, and then behind the Allied armies into Berlin. She knew you were alive. I know. She never forgot you. Yes. I did what I did so as not to implicate your mother. I thought it was for the best. How did you know that mother had died? 
Your Uncle Owen wrote to me in Kiel. I am here to tell you that I'm sorry and to ask you to forgive me. Why did you never come back? Your mother divorced me in 1947 and married your stepfather. All I could do was to leave you all in peace and trouble you no more. I did not believe I had the right to after the way I deceived your mother. Did she ever try to trace me, Hilda? Of course. She traced my grandparents, but was told that both my grandmother and my grandfather had died in Auschwitz. All the Ministry of Defense would tell us was that you deserted us, in fact, on the day I was born. Have lunch with me, Hilda, and I'll try to explain why everything had to happen the way it did. You see, the day that you were born, my love, was the day we lost the war. Gareth Armstrong played Hugh, Paul Gregory, Robert Klein, and Ella Hood, Harriet, in The Day We Lost the War by Michael Davis. Sir Ian Maxwell was Frederick Yeager, Major Cunningham, William Squire, and Captain Baker, Philip Bond. Dr. MacDonald and Mr. Mizzen, Rex Holdsworth, Commander Gregory and Alan Davis, David Lynn, Owen and Thompson, Simon Cuff, Mrs. Tresida, Joan Walker, and Muriel, Nicola Bevo. The Day We Lost the War was directed in Wales by Adrian Morby. <laughs>